Hi, so in this video I'm going to go over uh, downloading MongoDB and installing it on uh, Windows 2008. So the first thing I'm going to do is download the software from MongoDB uh, website. Uh, I'm also going to download Rogo RoboMongo. Then I'm going to set up the binary directory, set up the database log directory, and then set up the database file directory. Um, I'm going to also uh, configure the configuration file and the MongoDB for Windows service. Then I'm going to install the Windows service and um, show you the GUI uh, RoboMongo interacting with uh, MongoDB and then uninstall the service. So um, let me get started here. Um, so if I go on the website, you see I have uh, you know downloaded MongoDB and then also RoboMongo. So if you just go to RoboMongo.org, that's the UI that I'm going to use to interface with uh, MongoDB. Um, so here I have it pre-downloaded. And what I'm going to do is, that the way MongoDB works is it's just a zip file of uh, the binary directories. You don't have to install anything, you just have to unzip it. So I downloaded the 64-bit version uh, for Windows 2008 and I'm unzipping it right now. And as that's happening, I am going to create at the root MongoDB. And as my instruction states, I'm going to set up a binary directory, a log directory, and a, a data directory. So let me do that. I'm going to call this the binaries and then the data directory data and then the log file directory log. So actually let, let me change that here because I'm actually calling it binary. Alright so um, that actually unzipped And I'm just going to copy the bin folder and everything over to my binary directory so you can see what I'm doing. I'm simply, I simply just unzipped it and I'm putting it in the binary directory that I created. So if I go back to see MongoDB, here's the binaries, here's where my data file is going to be, and here's where my log file is going to be. Of course, in production, you're, you're not going to distribute the files like this. It's going to be in a different uh, hard drive, you know, or a different disk and spread out, you know, in RAID or whatever, or, you know, whatever's the latest, uh, greatest um, hard drive technology, storage technology, a SAN or whatever. Uh, that gives you the fastest access. But for demonstration purposes, this is how I'm going to start off in my local computer. Um, so my next step here is I'm going to set up the configuration file and normally I, I would actually go in MongoDB and uh, go into the bin directory and I would actually just start the MongoDB daemon which is called uh, MongoD or Mongod, uh, standing for MongoDB, and and I would type in stuff like log path uh, equals or C colon where I'm going to put the log file. So ba basically, this statement here, you know, so I, I might put in MongoDB slash log slash Mongo dot log and then the db path where I'm going to have the file. Um, so, so that's how the normally the parameters would be and if you want to know what the full parameters are you can go to the configuration files and there's a bunch of parameters here such as how verbose you want the log messages to be, the port, you know the binding I'm just going to do the default port which is 27017. 
So let, let me do that. Let me show you how to set up the configuration file. It's exactly like you would uh, by, it's exactly how it would look as if you were typing it into the command line, except you're putting all of that in a file. So let me show you that. Um, if I go here. So I put that all in a file. And you notice it's these two steps here. So if you notice, there is some inconsistency here with the log path here is actually a file, not the path. So you, you do have to specify the full file path along with the file name, Mongo log is what I named it. And those files have to exist and the directories have to exist. Uh, the inconsistency is where the DB path is actually just a path, you know, there's no you know, file name or files or whatever. So you notice um, I did create these already which matches up with this and you know why not I shall uh, also capitalize it so I'm, I'm gonna actually dump that copy that file into the binary folder and I'm going to create a folder here called config. So this actually changes somewhat because I have a folder here called config. So this is going to be my command to install the to install MongoDB as a Windows uh, service. So I'm gonna just paste this command. And you notice, um, see, so all I did was I just, uh, you know, specified where the configuration file is, the full path name, dash dash install. And, um, it tells you that it's installed successfully and um, all I have to do is start it so I could just do net start mong mongodb uh, typed it in wrong net start mongodb so the service is starting and if I go here to refresh my services in the Windows service, you see MongoDB started. And it is going to start automatically when my, um, when my uh, server starts. So the next step is um, actually, there, if, if I go into the bin directory here, you'll see there's a mongo.exe. The mongo.exe is the command line interface. So here I'm connected to mongodb and I could you know say you know stuff like you know, show uh, show dbs and there's one db there um, so I, I have installed it but let me install the GUI RoboMongo so you know all you have to do is double click and I just wanted to demo this RoboMongo along with so I'm gonna create a connection and um, I'm just going to name it uh, local and that's the port save if I connect you see this this is the 
this is the interface that I have now. So that's how you configure MongoDB as a Windows service uh, just by following these steps here. And once again, if, if I bring up the Windows services, see that I indeed do have MongoDB open. I, I mean uh, started as a, installed as a Windows service. And uh, one more thing I did want to show you is the command to actually remove the service is just mongod.exe dash dash remove. And that actually requires a restart. So I'm not going to do that here, uh, but that is the command to it, make sure you stop the service uh, before you issue that command. And again, it does require a reboot. Otherwise, um, the this service will still be there, but actually uninstalled. But it'll still show up because it's in the registry. Um, so that's really it. Um, so in in the next videos, I'm I'm actually gonna do. A video of the insert update delete and basic commands you would usually do for a database so doing basically CRUD operations uh, um, you know create read update delete so all right uh, thank you for watching